What up my cornflakes? My name is Thomas. This is Between Two Parens and in this video we're going to be showing you how to set up a production version of the Hello World Closure Script application that we've been building in this whole series so far. Link above and in the description below if this is the first time you're seeing or hearing about this particular series. And feel free to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and turn on the notification bell if you want to be alerted when I go live. So the reason why I'm actually making this video because if you remember I said in the previous video that that one was going to be my last one in the setting up closure script from scratch series that I was doing but some people had a few questions about how to build a production bundle and there was even some questions about how to deploy it all right so what is a production version of a closure script application what that means is we tell the closure script compiler that we wanted to do all kinds of advanced optimizations like dead code elimination we wanted to do munging we wanted to remove all white spaces comments all that kind of great stuff so that it creates the tightest smallest possible version of our code that we can easily send over to our clients in the browser and a little housekeeping item what we're going to be doing here is showing you how to do all this with fig wheel you can get the same result if you wanted to use the closure script library itself or if you want to use shadow CLGS big wheel provides us with nice little conveniences that makes it a little bit easier a little bit less typing a little bit less configuration so without any further ado, what we're going to be doing in this video is two things. The first one is setting up a new build configuration file for FigWheel, which tells FigWheel how to build a production version of our ClojureScript application. And the second thing that we're going to be doing is setting up an alias to actually build the production version of our ClojureScript app. The reason we do the second one is just a developer experience. You wouldn't have to do it normally if you didn't want to, but I want to just show you how you can get a little bit closer to having a more efficient build process. And at the end of the video, I'm also going to tell you about a few gotchas when it comes to working with production builds of ClojureScript. And finally, I will talk a little bit about deployment strategy, but that's a bigger topic. Either way, let's get started with the video. So what we're doing right now is picking up the Hello World application exactly where we left it in the previous video, which is linked above and there will be something in the description below. And where this begins is we need a new build configuration file. If you've forgotten what a build configuration file is, this is something that is specific to FigWheel. And it's when you have something like a dev, that's the name of your build, .clgs.eden. The .clgs.eden is FigWheel's convention that it likes to use. And what that does is it describes what you want your build to look like. So this is what we want our build to look like when we're in development. We want it to be doing things like HMR and live CSS refresh. However, we don't need all that when we're doing a production build. So the first step is we need to build a new configuration file. So we'll just add the new file, which will be prod.cljs.eden. And you're just going to create that in the root of the project. And what we need to do inside of the prod.clgs.eden file is two things. We need to tell it the file to build and we need to tell the closure script compiler the level of optimization we need to do for a production build. And you'll notice that a lot of this is kind of similar to what we do not in devs.eden but in dev.clgs.eden in our build. So the first one is we need to tell it the file. So we're going to take main and then we'll do hello world app just like we did before. And then the second one, as I mentioned, was telling it the optimization level. The keyword for that is optimizations, and then you'll do advanced here. All right, so what this is actually doing right now is it's saying take the hello world.app namespace. This is the closure script entry file to our entire application, and I want you to advance compile it into one single file. That's all that does there. Now, if you're wondering about these keywords and things like that, there are a bunch of other ones, for example, none, simple, and I'll have a link in the description below, which will show you the closure script reference site that you can go to, which you can see all the different types of optimization levels and read up a little bit more about those. Now, if you're looking at this, and then we look at the dev.clgs.eden, we notice that there is this little auto bundle webpack. Now that's one that you might not think to add back in, but I want you to remember to add that in. And we did discuss this in the video, how to use NPM in a CLJS app, which is linked above and in the description below. And what that is, this line right here, this is just a little piece of metadata. And this one is specifically for FigWheel. And it says, hey, after you compile the ClojureScript version of the app, I want you to pass it to Webpack. And Webpack is going to figure out how to handle our NPM dependencies. So because we are using NPM dependencies in our Hello World application, we still want that to happen, that behavior, 
when we advance compile. So we'll just add it in here, this auto bundle webpack. And that's pretty much all you need for the configuration. Now what we can do is move on to the next step, which is setting up an alias just to make our development experience a little bit nicer. So what we're gonna do is go into our depths.eden file and you can literally copy this alias right here. So we can take this one here, dev, and then we can just paste it here. And we're gonna change this dev to prod because this is going to be the alias we run when we want to build a production application. Now, I don't need a REPL, okay? Because all this command does is it's going to build a production artifact of our ClojureScript application. In addition to that, I can change the build to just be build once. And we'll just line up those. And finally, what I want to build is not the development version, I want to build the production version. This is the prod.cljs.eden file right here that we just created. All right, so what is build once, what is build? When you do something like build once, what that does is says, after I compile it, I will do nothing. That's exactly what we want in this case. So it's not gonna start a REPL, it's not gonna do HMR, it's not gonna do any kind of server rendering or anything like that. It's just gonna build a production version of our ClojureScript application, put it in the target directory, and that's it. All right, and that's pretty much it. That is everything you need for configuration to actually set up a ClojureScript production bundle. What I'm gonna do, as I've just started doing, is open up the target public CLJS out directory, and you're gonna see dev. That's because dev was the only build we had. Now I'm gonna go into my terminal and I'm actually gonna build the production version that we just created by using our new alias CLJS a prod. Press enter on that and this will take a moment but I wanna direct your attention to the target directory so you can see what's happening there. And what you're gonna notice about this is it did take a quite a bit of time to actually do this and that's just because of all the work that has to be done in order to advance compilation of our ClojureScript application which is one of the reasons why we don't just run um, advanced compilation the whole time. I mean, you could do that, but we don't because it would just add so much extra time to the development flow. Now that everything is done, you'll see we have our prod directory, which is awesome. And then we have our main.js bundle, which looks like this. And as you can see, it is munged, it has Brightspace removed, and it is much smaller than what the main.js file would look like in the other version, the non-advanced compilation version. This is like, you know, 400 lines or whatever it is. But this version is not the final version that goes to the browser. The one that goes to the browser is main bundle. And this is the one that we passed or was output by Webpack. So this is the one that has all those require statements, the NPM stuff that's been like inlined and properly managed by Webpack for us. Now that we built this, how could we actually test this? Because I mean, it would suck to send this to, you know, our production environment and it doesn't actually work. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you a quick little trick that you can do to test that everything is working as you would expect it to. And I'm going to take this prod alias and just call it prod serve. And then we're gonna go into here and we're gonna say dash dash serve. So what this actually does is says, hey, Figwheel, build my application in advanced compilation, the production version of our ClojureScript app, and then I want you to serve it uh, using your own server that you set up. Now, where this is helpful in our particular application is it's just an illustration, it's just a sanity check to show you that this is working the way that we would expect it to work. And I do recommend that you have an alias like this, but it wouldn't necessarily be like this. It would probably be a version closer to the way that you would actually run your application in a production environment. Because you wanna be as close as possible to that environment and not just doing like what Figwheel would wanna do as a little convenience helper. But what we do now is we do clj-a prod serve. And what this is gonna do, as I said, is the exact same thing as prod, but it's gonna start a server and it's gonna serve it up for us. As we can see, it starts up the site. It does exactly what it should have done in development. However, I missed something, and this is something that's easy to miss and I'm wanting to highlight it, which is why I left it out. So if we go back to the Atom editor and we go into our index.html file, you're gonna notice that we're actually still serving our dev main bundle. So what you wanna do when you're testing this stuff out is make sure that you are referencing the production bundle. This is an easy, you know, little gotcha that gets in the way. Now that we've made that change, what we can do 
is refresh this and see that everything worked as expected and it did we don't really see any differences there and we can see that we're serving the main production bundle so we see that everything is working that's awesome and that is everything involved in creating a production version of your closure script application is literally setting the optimization level to advanced and then referencing it in your index.html file but as I mentioned, there are a few gotchas and I wanna talk about deployment strategy just a little bit. All right, so the first problem that may come into place is you don't get a main underscore bundle.js when you build an advanced compiled version of your ClojureScript application. And one of the most common culprits for this is you may not have the proper NPM dependencies installed. So I can actually show you what this might look like by doing this. Let's take this prod directory right here and we're just gonna delete that. Then what we can do is we can actually go and delete our node modules completely. And we'll go into our packet.json and I'm going to take this and I'm just going to delete webpack CLI. So then what we want to do is we actually want to run npm install again because we do need some uh, npm dependencies in order to reproduce this particular bug. Okay, beautiful. So what we're going to do is we're just going to run clj-a prod. We're building our production closure script application. So when that's completed, we do see that there is a prod directory, but we only have our main.js file. And really everything that I'm going to tell you right now only applies if you don't have your NPM dependencies set up. So if you're not using something like NPM uh, depths like bundle target and you don't need Webpack or anything doing its magic, then that would be fine. But if you are and you don't see a main underscore bundle, this is kind of one of the root causes and you can actually see why it's happening. So Figwheel gives us informative little message and it says, hey, I'm running Webpack right now. I'm running it in production mode and it's gonna go and take the main.js file and it's gonna output something called main underscore bundle. Okay, so why didn't that work? What we could literally do is take this command and run it ourselves. And you will notice that this happens. I'm actually going to spread this out a little bit so it's easier to read. It says that it can't actually find Webpack CLI. And then it's asking us if it wants to install it. So that's a tip off that something didn't actually work properly. And in this case, all you would do is type yes, and then you could actually just run the command again and it would work as expected. But that's one reason why a uh, main underscore bundle might not be available or working. And the second gotcha that can happen is you actually build the production version of your closure script application and then you deploy it and then, oh wait, nothing works. Like for example, you might get just a white screen or like a piece of functionality is broken completely. When that happens, do not worry. There is a link in the description below and I'm gonna send you to that because that will talk about all kinds of different patterns of problems that can occur in a production version of a closure script uh, application. And like really there are probably three or four types of common things that happen. They're super easy to resolve, but identifying them can be tricky in the beginning. So what you wanna do when that happens is you wanna use something called pseudonames and then you wanna do pretty print true. And what pseudonames will do is it'll actually restore the human real names versus the munge names. And then pretty print just makes the code actually easier to read. So let's actually see what this looks like. So you know where you put these commands. So we do pseudoname true. And then we do pretty print because we like that indentation true. We're going to save that up and then you can actually run tlj a prod again. And you're gonna notice that I did not actually install Webpack CLI. I didn't do that in some like edit, like post-production clipping. All I'm doing is setting this here because the advanced compilation version, just to show you what this will actually do, comes in main.js. So you don't need main underscore bundle to see this take effect. Now, if we go to main.js, oh, look at that. We see indentation, we see human readable names, all this kind of great stuff. What that means is that when you run this, in your development environment because what you're going to have to do in order to debug these production problems is build the application in your development environment using advanced compilation this will help you identify the problems and the final piece will be deployment strategy and really what that's about is where does the production version of our closure script app live 
and how does it get served? And then how do we write our HTML file so it can pick up on the latest versions every single time they come out? My recommendation for all of those is look to what the JS community does, look to what Python does, look to what any other language does. Because right now, when we're talking about deployment strategies and serving up production artifacts, that's not a closure script thing anymore. That's not a closure script thing anymore. All this is, is just web development patterns. So where could this code actually live? You could put in a CDN. You could have your application server serve it up. There are tons of different places that you can put this thing. Uh, as an example of the application server, what you could do there is let's pretend you're building an Uber jar just to come back to close your world a little bit. You would put the production version of your JavaScript application into the class path of your closure application. So for example, maybe there's a resources public that it gets served out of, you just put it in there. And then when you build the application, it gets included inside of the Uber jar. And because you probably set up your web server to actually find that piece of JavaScript file, it'll serve it as you would expect. And the second part of this is the index.html file. How do I actually you like write the name of the production version of the JavaScript bundle that was just created? One way maybe you actually attach a hash onto the end of it so it's always unique, which means that the browser can employ caching strategies. Uh, another option is you name it the exact same as you do in development so that you never have to change it. And again, if you're doing the second or the sorry, the first one, then what you would want to do there is you would want to as a part of your production build, maybe this is in your CI CD process, it could be on your local machine, wherever you put it, you're just going to want to add a step. And that step is going to be dynamically creating an index.html file. Perhaps there are tons of different ways that you could do it. Uh, you could server side render the HTML file. There's there's all kinds of different things. And maybe you're even passing it in as an environment variable. I'm not going to say how to do it. I'm just saying those are some of the ideas to just spark the imagination and get things going. And with that, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please make sure that you like it, subscribe to the channel. Let me know if it was helpful, what I left out, what was confusing. I'll be happy to answer any of those questions. And I hope to see you all again soon.